Hello, today I'm going to show you how to access and use the data viewer tools on lakesuperiorstreams.org. We're looking at the home page right now, and on the home page there are three different places to access the data hosted on the site. We have the real-time data graphing tool here, and you can see the little animation of the graph playing. We have the data launch pad, which shows us an interactive map of all the gauge sites in the region. And at the bottom of the page, and at the bottom of every page on lakesuperiorstreams.org, we have a tab that takes us to the data viewer as well. Now this spot right here is the same as this one. First I'm going to show you how the data launch pad looks. Like I said, it opens up an interactive map. You can zoom in and out on it using your mouse or the plus and minus keys over here. Each of these dots is indicating one of the streams or gauge sites in the lake that's hosted by the Natural Resources Research Institute or one of the other agencies in town. And you can read more about those on the page. By hovering over any of the sites, it tells you where it's located. In this case, you can see we're looking at the Duluth entry. This is down by the lift bridge, and the Superior entry is here. There are two buoys out in Lake Superior that will give us data about water temperatures as plotted by depth. And then we have several Duluth streams, Amity, Tisher, Chester, Miller, and Kingsbury, as well as the St. Louis River, the Nemagi, and several spots in the estuary. So by clicking on any one of these dots, brings up a little pop-up that will take you either to the web page specific for that, that stream, in this case Kingsbury Creek, where we can access the data viewer, as well as information about the watershed can be really useful to look at roads, stream length, road density, even some graphs of how the land is used. But we can also go to the data plotter and this is what we want to look at today. So I'm going to click on the plotter that's going to open up a page that allows us to select all of the data available for Kingsbury Creek. So in this case it's from 2002 to 2013 you can select one or two or however many of the years you want, or you can choose to load all of the data by selecting up here. And then after selecting which data you want, click load data. It takes a little while to open up. You'll need Java to run, run this program. So make sure Java is installed and enabled on your computer. When the data is ready, this button pops up and you can open up the color mapper and 2D plotter. I'll move that over so we've got a better view of it. Now on this plotter, I'll show you a little bit about how this is set up. You can see that on the x-axis we have time. In this case, we're looking at a span of 15 days. And we can change this to be as far out as one year at a time, or as much as close as 12 hours. You can see how that changes it here. I'm going to set it somewhere in between at four days right now. Right here is a scroll bar that allows us to move between dates. You can see how as I move this scroll bar, we're moving through time, moving backwards in this case. And now if I go back this way, we're going to move forward in time. And all of this can also be stepped through using the arrow button or allowed to animate on its own by pushing the double arrow button. You can see it's moving along on its own now. You can change the speed at which it moves, slowing it down or speeding it up as well as plenty of, of other customizations. I'm going to stop this for now so I can show you a few other things. Um, right now you can see grid lines on our graph. Those can be turned off 
if you find them um, distracting or left on if they're helpful for getting active or uh, accurate measurements. If you remember, we loaded up all the data for Kingsbury Creek. So here I can switch between the different years and it will keep my settings on the screen as they were before. So 2008, 2012, and so on. On this map, you can also see the different water quality parameters listed here. One of them is always available to be color mapped, and that color map scale will be at the top of the graph. In this case, we're ma mapping turbidity on the color mapper. Turbidity is a measure of muddiness in the water. So anytime we see a darker area in the graph, we're seeing more mud in the water. And in this period of time, it looks like Kingsbury Creek is running fairly clean. But I'm sure if we were to focus in, we could find some areas that show much, much muddier periods of time. And those show up on the color mapper like this with really dark bands. And this is periods of time when it was very muddy, maybe in relation to this rain event. Rain is mapped, the precipitation totals is mapped by these green bars. And this is uh, the precipitation at the Duluth Airport, as reported by the National Weather Service. And then we have all these other lines going on in our graph. If you look over here, you can see water temperature is plotted as a black line. Conductivity or saltiness in the water is this red line. And flow is a blue line. All of these parameters can be changed or removed as you'd like. So for example, if we didn't want to color map turbidity, but wanted to show conductivity, we could select that. And now you can see conductivity is color mapped. By removing parameters we don't want to see, we also can make this graph area a little bit bigger. So for example, if we took out flow, and we took out water temperature, just to focus on that conductivity. Now conductivity you can see is mapped two ways, both with this red line and with the color mapper. The nice thing about the setup is once you have the graph set the way you want it to look, you can switch between years to make comparisons. Or if we had different streams loaded up, as I'll show you in a moment, we can just switch between different streams as well. So let's look at that next. Now, if you recall, we accessed that Kingsbury data from our data launch pad, which looked like this. But if we go back to the home page, we'll go into the real-time graphing tool here. And again, this is going to be the same as at the bottom of any of our pages on the website where we can click on Data Viewer. And it will open up a new launch pad for, for that data. And here you can choose by stream if you would like. Um, it's early spring right now, so some of our SONs, our gauges, are not yet active in the streams. If you scroll down, you can see all those other sites that were noted on the data launch pad are still available here. And we can see any updates about what's going on with the, the gauges on this page as well. But I'd like to see all of the streams available for 2013. So I'm going to select this, which will load up Chester, Kingsbury, Tisher, Amity, and Miller Creek all at once for 2013. And now this should look familiar. Again, remember, you'll need Java to access this and play the, uh, the data viewer. Again, I'm going to load all of the data. And then the color mapper becomes available. And so all those defaults are just as they were set before with 15 days. Right now we're looking at Tisher Creek, but we can always go to Amity, Chester, Kingsbury. So now we can switch between streams versus between years within the same stream. 
turbidity is going to be color mapped and then all of these are set as before. So again you can set the graph to look however you would like. We have it mapping turbidity right now and I'm going to change the plot to show us only four days so we can get a closer look. You can see right now the temperature is going up and down each day dropping in the evening and going up shortly after noon each day hitting a high point. If you wanted to color map that to more easily see it you could do this and it would color map it again. Here's our scale. We'll switch back to turbidity for our color mapper. If we wanted to get rid of conductivity we could remove that we wanted to put it back on but change the scale of it again the pound sign or hashtag and you can adjust that scale to be larger or smaller and then you can animate the data and play it and this particular uh, launch pad makes it easy to switch between streams so here we're looking at Amity Creek but if I wanted to look at Chester Creek for the same period of time or Tisher Creek I could do that as well. So here we can see a period of time where there was a rain event and Amity Creek got muddy as shown by the color mapper but if I wanted to look to see how one of the other streams responded I could just select that and all of our settings stayed exactly the same so in this case we can see Tisher Creek was not quite as muddy in relation to this particular event as Amity was, whereas Kingsbury got very muddy for a period of time right afterwards. So this data viewer is very flexible. You can, you can get it set up to show exactly the information you want and get rid of anything that doesn't help with telling the story you would like to tell using the real-time data from our streams you can animate it and you can compare between streams very easily as well. So finally I want to show you I mentioned that we also have data from the streams or from Lake Superior excuse me we're gonna go back to the home page anywhere on this website Lake Superior Streams. If you want to get back to the home page you can just click right here and it will take you back to the home page. And we'll go to the data launch pad and we'll select one of these buoys this time. I just want to show you how this works as well. So you can get data from the lake. And we'll load all the data And again, we'll do the color mapper. And now we're getting a graph that is plotting the temperature. It's color mapped. We have the surface of the water up here going down to a depth of 40 meters. And this line here is also showing temperature, which is plotted along the x-axis at the top here. So this is also animatable and you can see the temperature changing over time. And again we could speed this up a little bit. And we're getting our date and time stamp up at the top here. So this is a very handy tool as well to look at. And again, we can change the scale of anything and change our parameters as, as required. So that's what the data viewer looks like for the buoys out in Lake Superior. A great way to look at how warm the water is, especially the surface of the water versus the deeper waters. And when we get strong winds, it actually flips this 
and um, mixes the water back up again. That's kind of an interesting thing to see. And finally, the last thing I wanted to show you was at our inlet, we can look at the flow of the water underneath the lift bridge. And I'm just going to load a couple of these up to make loading it a little faster now. So now it's ready for us to open up. And now we're looking at water as measured by the gauge near the lift bridge in Duluth. And you can see it's mapping velocity as a negative value or a positive value. And this is showing whether the water is flowing into Lake Superior or flowing into the bay. So if it's flowing under the lift bridge in, in any particular direction. And this will have to do with winds. It will have to do with the seiche on Lake Superior and um, some other variables as well. So when we see these brown areas, that means that the water is flowing out of the St. Louis River estuary into Lake Superior. And when we see the blue areas, the water from Lake Superior is being pushed under the lift bridge into the estuary area. And you can see some pretty clear patterns with the in and out of that. And again, all of this can be modified and mapped um, just as we've done with the other plotters. Finally, let's say you would like to download this data as either an Excel file or HTML file for uh, plotting in your own program. That's possible as well. And if we go back to this data launch pad, we'll just select one of these streams, in this case Tisher, and we'll go to that stream's website. And along the sidebar, you can see right here, if we go to weekly data, it's going to take us to a page where we can download either weekly data or we can download the complete data set for any period of time. And if we want the data set plus those calibration notes, um, that's, that's possible to look at too. So in this case, we'll just click the 2013. And Tisher 2013 is going to be downloaded as a zipped folder. And you'll be able to open it up in an Excel table. And again, you can see all of those parameters here and the date available. And as we scroll through, there's not a whole lot happening in the stream in January, but now we can get into some of this data. And you can see it's data every 15 minutes. So a pretty dense data set. So I hope this helps you in accessing the data on our website and using the data viewer. It's a pretty, um, pretty easy tool to use. I hope you explore the rest of the Lake Superior Streams website. We've got a lot of data available about the streams in Duluth. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us and we will be happy to answer any questions you have.